You don't want it dead? It's low key seafood 2023. Kinda. Alright, alright. So it might be closer to a mix of Ninja Gaiden, the Modern Warfare 2 third person mode, and seafood. Because of these crazy ass parries. But to sum up the combat in one word, it's dope. And yeah, we got a couple of topics to cover in this review, but we're gonna start with the combat and dive in head first. Like Trey Songs. Now the takedowns and or executions in Wanted Dead are crazy. And the combination of mixing in a katana with a handgun is something we need to see more frequently. No bow. Now the melee controls or close quarter combat controls are a combination of using square and triangle or X and Y if you're using the Xbox controller. Now the X's or squares are your melee attacks. And your triangle is your handgun attacks. And the idea is to mix them up in different sequences to pull off beautiful combos. And when you've gotten to the point where you've stunned an enemy, you can use triangle and circle or Y and B to do a takedown. Now moment of truth, you do want to make sure you're paying attention and watching the enemies around you because of flash and light, kind of like the ones in Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, I know. The unblockables? Yeah, those, they made their way into one that's dead. And unlike Jin Sakai, and the stone intercepts them with hollow points, whereas Jin had to roll away. Now you can step or shadow step or side step, whatever you want to call it, with A or X depending on which controller you're using. And it really comes in handy when dodging and or bouncing from enemy to enemy. It comes in handy when you need to close the distance between you and a stunned enemy. And what's really dope about that ability is if you have several stunned enemies in your vicinity, you can perform several takedowns in succession. Also, the handgun can shoot stunned enemies from anywhere on the map, which is something you gotta take into consideration when you get in busy. Now, I bet y'all couldn't guess, but the left analog stick is for movement, and the right analog stick, the camera. You sprint with L3, and block is LB or L1. And when timed right, you guessed it, it's a parry. Now, what I wouldn't do to y'all is lie. And much like Sifu, it'll take a second to get used to all these tactics and using them in the right ways, so prepare yourself for a little bit of a learning curve. Kinda like Sifu, but y'all are all top tier gamers, so it's nothing y'all can't handle. And speaking of handles, Burner's got handles and Hannah's got burners, so let's talk a little truth. Y'all know, so journeys. <laughs> but nah, for real. Lieutenant Stone is kinda like an editor. She forces enemies to fade from one clip to the next clip, if you know what I'm saying. In a nutshell, she lights folks up. And I say all that because it's my bridge to my next point, which is that in one of that, you get a primary assault rifle, which is her custom one, and you get a handgun, which we discussed earlier. But you also get to pick up a second primary weapon to give you a total of three guns, which sort of turns her into a walking arsenal. And continuing with the gun controls, in one of that, you aim with LT or L2 and you shoot with RT or R2, which is, of course, pretty standard for shooters at this point. And that's usually regardless of whether or not it's a first-person shooter or a third-person shooter. Ironically, Gungrave Gore was one of the only games that didn't have it like that. Now you switch between your primaries with the left and right arrows, and you reload with circle, or B. And if you're wondering if you can switch to your handgun by yourself and use it like you would the primaries, the answer is absolutely not. <laughs> Let me stop messing with y'all, but for real, you can't. And if you're wondering why you can't, I really don't have an answer for y'all. But it's all good because it really doesn't mess up the gameplay at all. And the only times I ever really thought about doing it was when I ran out of bullets on both my primary weapons. See, with one of that, the game does force you to make some wise decisions as far as what weapons you're going to use when. Me personally, I find myself in more hand-to-hand -hand melee combat ones or close quarters combat fights than I did long range ones. But there is definitely a balance. You need both, for sure. And in a lot of ways, the game sets you up to be in the middle of both the close quarters fight and the long range fight. Simultaneously, of course, but you do run around with your squad so you're never alone. They actually do do some work for you and they actually hold some of the aggro or attention if you will. So people do focus on your teammates and not all on you so it gives you some opportunity and freedom as to what distance you want to fight at. And just a quick side note, Wanted Dead is really fun but it does have its challenges but it's still fair. There's only three different difficulties and the first one starts off in normal, second one is hard and you have to unlock the third one after you beat it and that one's called Japanese Hard. Now for normal and hard, they were cool, normal has its difficulties hard is a little bit more difficult Japanese hard might have a different narrative I haven't played it yet I've only put on the other two but that could be some cheese 
no bug. Also, the developers anticipated I had frustration, so they implemented a training mode, which I think everybody should check out. And just for the last couple of parts of the combat, you can throw grenades with RB or R1. When you upgrade it, you can get two types of grenades, which is frags and incendiary grenades. And you switch between those by holding RB or R1 and pressing the left or right arrows to decide which one you want to use. I won't lie, they both do work, but the incendiary grenades are a step or two above the frags, for me at least. Now getting into the skill tree, it's split up into three categories categories offense defense and utility and there's about a total of 30 to 31 upgrades and i won't go through all of them here even though i kind of want to but i'm posting this review a little later than i wanted to so i just tell you which ones you should get as early as you can now we won't count the first three because you have to unlock the first three to even open up the tree to get the rest of them so we'll leave that as you got to get all those then for offense a tip is that i'm generally going to tell you should get ones that'll lead to finish your opportunities the dash attack is first just because you dash around a lot parry follow-up is great because it opens you up for a lot of finisher possibilities next up you would need the severed arm finishing strike the severed leg finishing strike and the handgun counter follow-up because that that tends to sever a leg so if you got the last one i was saying you can then do a finisher opportunity then the sliding attack and then you want your melee damage to be as high as it can be now on defense you first want your power parry because that can lead to attacks that can get them into a situation that you could do a finisher not to mention it gives you two options whether or not you want to intercept that strong hit with a gunshot or you just parry it and then you can go in for as many attacks as you may need to lead to a finisher opportunity after that you want your armor reinforced followed by your guard stance to increase then increase melee defense then you want the stim pack plus one and the stim pack recovery up as for the utilities the top two for me was added the incendiary grenades and the quartet sleeper hold because he can actually help you lead to another finisher which is definitely fire and sometimes he just puts them in a strong enough sleeper hold to put them to sleep so i'll take that too Weird. but unfortunately y'all know what time it is i ain't gonna lie i usually hate this part of the review where i do gotta put in some knock but it wouldn't be a review without it and generally i have tons of fun playing and reviewing these games so these are just a few things that i may have liked to see improved on the next one so the first one is that some of the times some of the enemies felt like they're a little inconsistent particularly the heavy armor dudes especially late in the game it took me a lot of l's to realize that at the end of the day and one of the dead you got to be brave enough to fight pretty much every enemy straight up including the heavily armored dudes the only ones you don't are the ones with shields then you hit them with a grenade and make them drop their shield and then you can body them like you would any other regular enemy and most particularly the instance on the rooftop right before we fight Kolchak which is one of the bosses but the first armored dude we fought I felt like I kind of could gauge how many hits it might take to put him down but the second one it just seemed like he would stay up for forever no matter how much I hit him eventually I did get him and maybe it's just because I had to fight one armored dude right after another for some reason it felt like he was taking way more hits than the first one the reason why this also stood out is because when you play through this you realize that your ammo really is limited even after you customize your assault rifle and you're able to carry more bullets it still runs out kind of fast so that's why when i was saying earlier that you gotta use it wisely you really do in a lot of ways it feels like it turns into a survival game a couple times because you're just short on ammo i just think the ais could drop a little bit more ammo later when the fights get more and more hectic but the second thing is that i think i would like for the combat tempo to be a little bit faster not necessarily ninja gaiden fast but maybe just a little faster than it was and also maybe it'd be cool to add some aerial moves for repositioning yourself kind of like ninja garden from there i would just say that i think the combos were a little bit limited so it'd be cool to just add a few more we don't need a ton it doesn't have to be tekken but even if it was Sifu, which i did say i would have thought some more combos in Sifu would have been fun too so i do appreciate that i'm not sure what the number is but i feel like there should be a certain amount where you at least feel like you're doing a new combo and last of course addressing the elephant in the room yes the voice acting could have been a little bit better but i don't expect it to be god of war or something like that this game wasn't built like that i think the voice acting was actually kind of fine sometimes and ironically a lot of the co-stars actually had some better voice acting than the main one but the point is i think they did what they wanted i don't think they were trying to hit something super dramatic or anything like that although some serious ish does happen it was still supposed to be more cool fun 
I do think the animation for some of the facial expressions could have been crispy here as well, but I still don't think that was the main goal for this. The main goal is the core gameplay, which I really did enjoy. But bumping all the hard knocks to come back to the light side of the force, if I had a verdict, it'd probably be a 7.8. I really did have a lot of fun playing this game. I really enjoyed the combat, and I actually really liked the art style for some of the story clips, where it was looking like the new cyberpunk show on Netflix. Yeah, that, that was dope. But y'all know how I feel about anime. I mean, look at my name. Safro Yanko. Come on, son. Not to mention that while the story wasn't super complex, it did give us some plot twists, which I also always appreciate. The point is, even with the year that feels like it's going to be packed with a lot of top-notch games, One of Dead was a good one for this year. I think it'll be one of my more purely just fun games for this year. I will say I could have seen it being 40 or 50, kind of like Sifu. But I'm always on the fence with that because I know everybody puts a lot of work into these games and it's not like 60 is actually crazy. So I also can't can't thank Saleo Studios and 110 Industries enough for hooking me up with a review copy so I can make this video. I really appreciate that. If you like hack and slashes and third person shooters and you like games like Sifu, you will really enjoy this. And I just kind of wish as a gaming community we understood that not all the games are supposed to be built like some of the ones that take 60 hours plus. I just think I appreciate them all for what they're built for and I think this was a fun one. But I'm gonna catch y'all on the next vid, alright? I appreciate y'all for watching this. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and let me know how you feel about this in the comments and i'm gonna catch you on the next vid all right peace